So next up, our final solution maker for today. We'll be back tomorrow with some more and on Thursday, 11 to 12. So we just, uh, Shatescott got to talk to Dennis a little bit beforehand and I don't know if you had any quick thoughts about this amazing thing, Climate Smart Farms from Garden Pool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think just the innovation across the board is, is, is absolutely like inspiring um, to hear these stories of people that are really actualizing um, and starting in, in, from really small, humble places. Um, you know, I was hearing, I was hearing his story just about how this really began in his backyard in a swimming pool, literally. Um, and from there, kind of scaled and created and was able to go viral and now implementing uh, solutions to a whole variety of different problems across the globe. And I think one of the important things in the day that we're living in too is like, how do we leverage this new technology and these, these brilliant ideas to solve multiple problems at once and to address multiple of these SDGs at once? Um, and so I think, yeah, I mean, that's, that's I guess like where where that work for me has been really inspiring to kind of be in the space and learn a little bit more about what you're doing. Um, it's incredible to think that so many people on islands are suffering already from climate. We see this in the Caribbean, and it's one of the places that Dennis is working in the Caribbean. He's from Arizona, and we're going to welcome him to stage and really want to notice when you hear this amazing solution. This is possible now. This is here now. We can accelerate this with all of our partners, find those doers. So without further ado, Dennis McClung, Garden Pool. Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Dennis McClung, and I'm with an uh, NGO called Garden Pool. Uh, let's see. And the uh, solution we're going to present today is called the Climate Smart Farm. 80% of the world's hungry live in places prone to natural disasters. Uh, climate-related disasters. Extreme weather uh, events are, have doubled in the past 30 years, and they project that over 100 million people will be put into uh, hunger and poverty by 2030 just from climate-related events. So our solution has humble beginnings. Like uh, someone mentioned before, it started 10 years ago in my backyard with an empty swimming pool where my family created a closed-loop ecosystem that produced a lot of food with very little external inputs. So we took these design principles and scaled it up for the Climate Smart Farm, which uses 98% less water than conventional agriculture and actually increases yields 10 to 18 times compared to conventional technology in the fields. And the most important part about the Climate Smart Farm is that it's resilient to the effects of climate change, whether it be floods, uh, soil erosion, drought, saltwater intrusion, and also hurricanes. So we developed the Climate Smart Farm so it's easy for farmers to implement in stages. The first stage is to create a pond where we capture rainwater, we stock it with fish, we retrofit existing buildings with solar panels and, and rain collection, and then provide micro-irrigation to the farmers. We put this to good use in Suriname. Here you can see the northern coast where most of the farms are. They've destroyed most of the mangroves. They lost kilometers of their soil. And now the farmers are suffering from saltwater intrusion. So here's a drone shot of a farm where we visited. We designed the Climate Smart Farms in uh, 3D modeling with virtual reality so I could actually walk around the farm and easier to implement in the field. Okay? Once the farmer has step one, of the Climate Smart Farm, it's easy to move on to step two, where we integrate a aquaponic greenhouse, and that's when we get the incredible yields. And as you can see, in one meter, we have six rows instead of two, and then six more on top of that, and six more on top of that. And so what the system does is it actually recycles nutrient water uh, using 90% less water, you can actually pack them in closer because it's a soilless system. And if the farmer knows a hurricane's coming, they could actually pick up the crops and move it with crops and all. So we put this into good use in Barbuda, an uh, island in the Caribbean that was devastated by a Category 5 hurricane. I was dispatched to the only surviving school in the whole country, uh, Sir Chesney George Secondary School. And this is the design we came up with that captures a lot of solar energy, water, and then produces a lot of food. Uh, this is a picture before we put the shade cloth on. And some of the best technology we actually brought was our 3D modeling and 3D printing skills. So. When you're doing disaster response, I was camping there for 30 days, no electricity, no water. And uh, we taught the, the school how to replicate, how to teach, how to model. And we actually manufactured the parts for the Climate Smart Farm right there in the field. Okay? So we, we are, have the ability also to take recycled plastics, uh, plastics, chip it up, and manufacture our own filament. And so once we have this, we have the sustainable manufacturing, so we can do a little more than just make Climate Smart Farms. It's very empowering. 
So we scaled this up to the industrial size in Puerto Rico after they had a Category 5 hurricane, which seems to be very normal now. Uh, I had a client with a 10,000 square foot hurricane proof factory that survived the storm. So we built an industrial size scale. This is uh, for, for commercial purpose. It's a million dollar startup that produces uh, seven to $10 million per year. And now the island of Puerto Rico has food, energy, and water, regardless of what kind of hurricane comes through. So we look at Climate Smart Farms as not only the most productive climate resilient farming system out there, but we feel that it's also a battery for the community that stores energy. It also produces a lot of food. It also has the ability to harvest and store water. And it has the ability to replicate and maintain its own self through sustainable manufacturing. We believe it's also full of profits as well. And it's going to help us achieve many SDG goals. So what Garden Pool is looking to do is to bring our technology that we developed out of the Caribbean, on into the rest of the Western Hemisphere, uh, partnering with institutions, uh, governments, and we want to bring it to the Eastern Hemisphere as well. Because we believe in doing so, it'll provide resilience for the world. Thank you for listening to my presentation on the Climate Smart Farm. For more information, please vi visit our website, gardenpool.org. Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is incredible. Let's just do that. <laughs> like everywhere. Okay, we want to welcome uh, our accelerators. Come, Come on, on up. up. And uh, so we're going to hear from accelerators. Again, if you're on live stream or even later watching at SGG Solutions, send ideas, solutions, anything you want to share with Dennis and all of us. Okay, so what do you guys have? Hi, um, oh. I'm Matabani from Startup Bootcamp Afritech, based in Cape Town, South Africa. And Dennis, really love your solution. Um, it goes into very vulnerable communities, especially post-disaster. And with the imminent threat that we are facing currently with climate change, I think it's really, really needed that we replicate this and accelerate this as fast as possible, uh, build resilience in communities, especially at their most vulnerable um, places. Thank you. Dennis, I'm Chandler from Elemental Accelerator based in Honolulu. Um, I absolutely love what you're doing, and I think it has profound effects you know, around the world. But what you touched on in your presentation as well, it sounds like you're actually inspiring entrepreneurs around the world and in communities that, that often need it the most. Was hoping you could maybe give us some examples or, or speak to you know, some of the entrepreneurship and innovation you're bringing to communities around the world. Sure, thank you. Well, once we have this technology, we enable the community to be entrepreneurs themselves. So some of the cool things we've done is the, one of the world's first fully 3D printed beehives. We A also 3D have beehive? 3D printed 3D printed beehive. beehives. Yep. We can make it from garbage too. And then we also have another device that can sterilize five gallons of water to World Health Organization standards to make it potable in 15 minutes. You could also charge your cell phones and laptops with it. So we do believe that it's capacity to development and providing resilience uh, for the communities that we implement this in. Terrific. Thank you. Hi, Bridget Gosling, Google.org. Thanks so much for the work you're doing, Dennis. To Megan's point, it's sort of like, why don't we just have this everywhere? And I think one of the things that's really amazing about the way that you're deploying this is that it's really flexible and adaptable, and that you're doing it in deep partnership with local communities and in collaboration across a network of different local organizations, which allows what could seem like this really high-tech, hard-to-create solution to actually be accessible in so many of the different communities that you're working in. I wondered if you could just share with us a few of the different types of organizations that you've collaborated collaborated with because it's such a diverse group and I think it really helps to illustrate the ways in which all of us could be helping you to bring this solution to more folks and really do it in a way that is working with local networks and with local activation so that the solution is lasting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we've partnered with other NGOs. I can go to their HQ like in Haiti and rock it and leave them with tons of technology, running water, electricity, et cetera. We partnered with uh, institutions that uh, help facilitate meetings with governments. We've worked with a lot of schools. I engage a lot of youth. We have a fantastic uh, program where we teach uh, college students how to replicate this, and they can do internship programs with us, their culminating experience, uh, doctoral thesis, et cetera. So uh, we find that if we get to tell people about our solution, they're very receptive to it. So. Love it. Thank you, Dennis, very much. My name is Monica King uh, from Innovator Spox. And what also echoing everyone's message, you have a solution that's from the get-go a collaborative solution. And I think that's so powerful because you're already thinking about multi-generation, multi-impact of multiple aspects of how you can empower and bring a tangible solution. 
But I know this can be done in more ways and you're looking for more partners in addition to the existing collaboration and always looking for creative solutions, which I'm always excited about hearing more. So curious, do you have some top list of like, these are partners that I'm looking to connect more to get this current work to the next impact level? Absolutely. Here at the United Nations in particular, I would love to work with the United Nations High Council Re Refugee Innovation, United Nations Environmental Program, United Nations Developmental Program. Other developing countries that would like to bring this technology and other institutes that would like to partner with me as well. Thank you. And there are already so many extraordinary folks that you work with, you know, some of the women in the Caribbean that you talked about um, in partnership and what they bring with their inventions and you put that together. My, one of my favorite things is the fact that you're going and getting waste plastic and grinding it up and then putting it through this 3D printer, which is now part of a farm idea, right? But there's a 3D printer, who thought of that? And making things, like you said, the beehive, other things as well. And many of the partners have come with those ideas and now are cross-sharing across this network. So it's really, it can accelerate itself. So thank you so much. And uh, I really appreciate our acceleration partners. Mo has been here every year. So I just want to shout him out for coming from Africa as a coach. So thank you, Dennis, for your thank genius you. work. Right.